Hey there, welcome to the Stormwater World Podcast. After 10 years in the stormwater industry, I feel like I've always scratched the surface of all there is to learn. I believe there are a lot of people just like me who are curious, but we're all just so busy. So I'm going to ask the questions so we can get the answers together. My name is Ty Garman, and I'm your host. Join me as we learn about what is happening in the stormwater world. Hey everybody, welcome back to this episode of the Stormwater World Podcast. I'm excited to have Mr. Jamie McCutcheon, PE, Principal of Rymar Water Works, with me today. Welcome, Jamie, and uh, happy birthday, my friend. So, uh, how are you? Yeah, I know you might be like, oh, you could have skipped that, but like, yeah. uh, you know, and there's a little, there's a little bit of time frame between when you know when we're recording this and when it comes out. So you may get some belated happy birthdays <laughs> on the old LinkedIn or something, but yeah, I don't know happy where birthday anyway. Yeah. Thanks yeah, for thank and thank you for coming on the uh, on the pod. Appreciate you being here, and and uh, we've got a lot to talk about today. I feel like so all of my uh, all my stormwater nerds out there, all my technical nerds, you guys better listen up because James got a lot to say. <laughs> uh, and I, I think you want to start out with uh, well, well, I, I tell you what, you start out where you want to start out because I think you you wanted to talk about some some of the the standards that probably need to be rethought and you have some also some thoughts on uh stormwater basin design in specific but where where do you want to start at Jamie Yeah so Ty, well, I appreciate you having me on I've been looking forward to this yeah. appreciate you accommodating schedule too but um and if oh, the, yes sir yes sir birthday wishes uh, when it hits I'll, I'll know where they came from but uh yeah <laughs> so, so you know you know a little yeah, I guess just so your your audience knows, I've been doing engineering or stormwater related work for about 30 years now. Um, okay. And so one of the things that, um, you know, has evolved over my career, when I first started, stormwater quality wasn't even a thing. You know, we just kind of did stormwater detention for quantity control and qualities developed over the years. And now we're kind of seeing the focus on quality, maybe even more so than quantity sometimes, because we're now worried about our rivers and streams as we should be, and our water as a resource is getting, you know, more and more valuable, which it should be. But, uh, you know, the way stormwater basins are done, and, you know, and the more um, urban areas, stormwater basins aren't as popular to use other ways, but in the more rural parts of the country, um, still stormwater ponds are kind of the most common stormwater feature. And so... You know, the kind of the overarching uh, idea for us today is kind of how do we do water quality and does that work? You know, we're spending lots of money, lots of engineering time, lots of construction costs, hopefully some maintenance costs. That's kind of a whole nother topic we could talk about probably another time, whether these things are actually maintained or not. But, uh, (laughs) man, yeah, but uh, that comes up, man, that comes that comes up every episode. Yeah. I think it, maintenance comes up every episode. So we'll leave that dirty word <laughs> to the end. I, I have so go ahead. Easy, go ahead. I, have, <laughs> I actually have an easy fix for that, but, but, you know, people haven't want to, haven't oh, yeah. done, wanted to do it. So, but anyway, um, but the general thought is, you know, for stormwater basins is intentionally you're just relying on settlement. I mean, the whole idea is you try to hold the water in the pond long enough to let whatever is there settle. Um, now there's some things that aren't going to settle, right? You got hydrocarbons floating on it or floatables or whatever trash is in there. But, you know, typically we're focused on sediment. That's the, that's the number one pollutant that we're trying to, to work on. And, you know, most of the time we are ex- assuming that the other things that we're trying to work on attach to sediment. And so if you catch the sediment, you've, you've gotten the biggest part of the issue. Um, gotcha. and so, you know, the, the, Standard these days for basins is you capture some first flush volume, and that varies across the country. You know, it can be a half inch, an inch. Uh, I think some states are now 1.2 inches, um, and you release that volume over a you know period of time. 24 hours seems to be common. Some places are 48. So you know the idea is that you're holding it long enough that the sediment particles settle out and drop to the bottom of the pond. Um, you know, some places worry about resuspension when water comes back in. You kind of assume it's going to stick to the bottom, so you don't worry about that too, as much. Um, but you know, over you know, when I as I look at basins we've done over the years, and I see that that water quality orifice getting smaller and smaller, and it being at the bottom of the pond, it's just kind of always been a an idea of mine that is this the best way to do it? And so, um, you know, 
Rymar, people may know, uh, we, we the manufacture the Marley float skimmer, which is mainly a during construction device. But in, in, in learning about the skimmer and how it works and getting approvals, different state areas, you know, what we're meeting is surface withdrawal. So we're just uh, meeting a surface withdrawal requirement because people figured out, hey, if you let the cleaner water off the top and drain the pond from the top down, you end up with more sediment being trapped in your basin. So, you know, it's just okay. not rocket science. It's just really simple. Hey, let's let the cleaner stuff off instead of sucking the mud or sucking the muddy water off the bottom of the pond. Let's take it off the top of the, of the pond and, and drain it out slowly, give time to settle. Right. And so that's, Makes become, sense. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty common sense. I'm not, uh, I'm an engineer, but I'm not, I'm not a rocket scientist. Okay. So right, right. Like, you know, why, why didn't we do that in the beginning? Like what, yeah, what happened? Right. You know, we, we, we thank Mr. Faircloth out there. He came up with that idea and, and he's, he promoted it and um, you know, he's done a great job of getting that adopted um, first in North Carolina and then eventually by the EPA and, you know, we can all fuss about governmental regulations and what's good and bad and otherwise, but um, I, you know, I can say that surface withdrawal is probably a relatively cost-effective, you know, high high benefit to cost ratio uh, regulation that was added. And so, you know, over the past uh, probably fifteen to twenty years, I guess, um, the skimmers have become pretty commonplace now. Most states have some sort of skimmer requirement during construction. Okay, so okay. Okay. everybody's accepted that. Yep, that's a good thing, um, or most people have. <laughs> not, not everybody, but, okay. but most people have. Right. Um, <laughs> right. okay. so, so then, you know, I look at it and say, okay, we do this design. We've got this skimmer surface straw during construction, and then post-construction, you know, your site's stabilized or hopefully mostly stabilized. You yank the skimmer off, and you put in a, uh, a low flow orifice at the bottom of the pond again. So we're going back to the old <laughs> way. Okay. So now you're sucking, right. the, you're, you're still relying on settlement, but you're sucking the water out of the bottom of the pond. All right. And so, um, you know, just common sense. How much sense does that make? It's just kind of like, Hey, why, why didn't we start? Why didn't we keep the skimmer there or, you know, or find a way to take it off the top and, the very basic answer to that is um, has to do with the original skimmers. They were all PVC products. And so it was pretty commonplace that PVC was used for the skimmers and PVCs are not, um, not durable. You know, they're not going to last for 20 years. Oh, uh, right? okay. Gotcha. Last gotcha. three years, okay. maybe four or five years, they're going to start to get brittle. They're going to have UV issues. You know, they're going to have stuff right. like that. And so, you know, from a, again, go back to that maintenance, you know, who's going to count on somebody replacing that product that's only a, a two, three, four year product, right? So nobody really thought about leaving them in there because they're worried about how long they last. So, but, uh, so what we do now kind of going back is, you know, you, you retain that first volume, first flush, you let it out. Okay. So okay. again, you know, counting on ponding or settlement. And then what happens when you get, you know, say you get a tenth of an inch of rain. Now I'm in South Carolina, so we get little thunderstorms that are pretty intense, but they may not drop very much rain. And so you get a tenth of an inch in 30 minutes. Well, it certainly washed off whatever was on the parking lot or on the roof, you know, and it's yeah. getting to that basin, but the water in the basin is getting a couple of inches and it's basically flowing in and flowing out. And so, you know, how much treatment did we get uh, by settlement, you know, during those kind of storm events? You know, it's just. Yeah. Yeah, probably not going, much. It's just rolling. Yeah. Probably not and, at all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and most of them, you've got some grass or some kind of vegetation. So it's probably grabbing some of that. Right? It's kind of like going through a filter strip or something. But, you know, let's say the water got a foot deep. You know, well, it kind of rolled over all that stuff, you know, and then it goes down to the bottom of the pond and you end up kind mm -hmm. of, you know, building stuff up at the bottom of the pond. So keeping that low flow orifice clean and keeping it from getting clogged is a challenge. Um, and again, if you can keep it open, is pulling out the dirtiest water in the pond first. <laughs> right, first. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so, so there we are. So, we, you know, we've, we've now, you know, um, you know, kind of, again, going back to the pre-skimmer days. And so, you know, one thing, whenever um, I came up with the idea of our skimmer, uh, one of the things that I was had thought about, even initially, and I, you know, 
if you forgive me, I'll, I'm going to tell the quick Marley Flow story for people that haven't heard it. So, oh, you know, don't <laughs> no, no, forgive me. Yeah. Do it. Let's do yeah. it. So, in fact, yeah. in fact, let's start. Let's start here for everybody. Let's start here. So it's Rymar Waterworks, everyone. So tell everybody why the company is called Rymar. Okay. Well, so the company. I think Rymar. this is funny. Yeah, it, it because. Was it was originally SW Products when we first founded it, first started. Right. And, um, right. I had a uh, had a, a partnership issue that didn't go so well. We had to kind of part ways, but um, we decided to rename the company. Just kind of a fresh start. And um, right. I asked my right. uh, my marketing company at the time to help me come up with a name, and they said we got it, and we're going to come up with it. And they did you know did the whole logo development, everything without ever telling me what the name was, and they came up with Rymar. Uh, cause our, our son is Ryan and our daughter is Marley. And, uh, so, so now, wait, uh, wait, yeah. Oh, so you already let the cat out of the bag, right? Right there. So, yeah, so before yeah. everybody jumps on Jamie, because of the first part of the company name is Ryan's name. It's actually fair because the original product to put you on the map is the Marley float, which is named after your yeah. daughter. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Back which in, I love that. I love, I love that. Yeah. Back, back in 20, 13, early 2012, South Carolina was adopting a new construction general permit that was going into effect January 1 of 2013. And so okay. uh, DHEC, our state agency, was going around doing uh, web, uh, um, you know, informational meetings for engineers. Hey, here are the new things in the permit. Here's the new stuff you're going to have to do. We're starting enforcing this January 2. You know, set, set of plans comes in, you better have them. So one of those was surface withdrawal i.e. skimmers and um, right. you know there were a lot of opinions about existing skimmers on the market um, you know some good some bad and uh, so December 2012 uh, our daughter had a bad night and kind of jumped ahead so many people know the part of the story but our daughter had a bad night uh, wanted to sleep with my wife and I uh, she was 11 so it had been like three or four years right since she had, <laughs> had wanted to do this so but she, but she's a little ruder so I got elbows knees in my back all night can't sleep and uh, for whatever reason started thinking about a skimmer and uh, actually got out of bed sketched it out went back to bed and over the next Oh, probably six, seven months. We were developing prototypes, trying to figure out if this is something that would work. Uh, finally, came up with a product we thought we could sell. And so, when it was time to, all right, we got to name it. Got to have some kind of name for it to to, to put it to market. So it's the Marley float, uh, named Very after my cool. daughter Marley, who uh, inspired the invention. And then, yeah, Very so cool. we. Very cool. Yeah, our son was not real happy that he was left out of the equation for, for the first you know, four or five years. And so uh, we rebranded as Rymar uh, after the partnership issue when, you know, got settled yeah. and, and moved on. And so now he's, yeah. he's got a little, little role tool and he, he does some sales for us. He, there's some people on here I'm sure have, have seen him. Oh yeah. I mean, I know Ryan. Yeah. Whatever. I know. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah. 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 In fact, I've up. never met, I mean, uh, Never met your daughter. I met your son. You never so, met Marley. Right? Yeah, so. she she Marley just yeah. graduated from Georgia, so she's uh you know she's she's grown awesome. up now and and uh, you know she, we'll see maybe she'll get get involved a little bit in the sales for us. She she's a my, might be my social media guru because I sure don't know how to do that, but I'm sure she does. But uh, but yeah, nice. but, but Ryan is is pretty involved. And he's like, hey, what about me? And so um, yeah, so Rymar. <laughs> But anyways, I interrupted you to go through all that history. You were you were wanting to talk about the Marley Float story. Was that yeah. what you, I, I, you wanted so, to kind of share a little bit of of that? Yeah, so, or? yeah. Well, one of the things when I invented it is is I wanted a product that was durable. You know, I wanted something that right. was going to be uh, going to last. And um, even back then, it kind of occurred to me, hey, you know, yeah, this makes sense for during construction. You know, it's I'd heard about skimmers and. Um, talk to some folks. Um, a lot of you guys probably know Joel Sprague with TRI Environmental, but Joel does a lot of testing and stuff and, you know, had just kind of bounced stuff off of him. And I was like, hey, you know, this this actually makes sense. Let's take the cleaner water off the top of the basin and let it out and then drain it from the top down and gives mud more time to settle. And so even when I first came out with the idea, I was like, hey, you know, this would be great if we could do it post-construction you know if it didn't have to be temporary if we could actually make this right a, a lasting product and it, there's some benefit there you know didn't know how much didn't know if we'd hit hit whatever you know post-construction water quality requirement of you know whether it's 80 percent or 85 percent tss whatever that magic number is right. in the different <laughs> uh, in the different ms4 yeah. you know you gotta gotta check uh, that box as a 
Uh, I call myself, yeah. so I'm not an engineer. I'm a permit getter, you know, so that, that's my job. Yeah. Go get the permit. But, um, yeah. so, so that was early on, you know, something that I had in mind. Well, we got to, got to get it out. Got to get a product that works. Got to get some traction. But ultimately it would be really cool if we could make this a post-construction, you know, product and benefit, uh, water quality as well. And so that's always okay. been kind of part of the plan to do it. And that's taken 10 years, but we finally now just, uh, just recently released, uh, the version that'll do that. So. Oh, okay. So you've, that's, so it's new. So the, the, uh, the durable, yeah. long lasting post-construction version just is just now coming out. So the, the skimmer has been out the entire time. We, we've had one major right, 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 right. innovation that we had one, one major redesign of it about four years ago, but, uh, we just completed testing of our, um, of our filter, we, we, we've come up with a filter product that goes around the skimmer. And so, apologize okay. for the dogs barking. So, uh, the filter goes around oh, the okay. skimmer. And so the idea mm -hmm. is you got the skimmer, use the skimmer to pull the water through the filter. And, um, and that filter then treats the water to whatever standard you're trying to get. And so we okay. prototype this. Gosh, for like three years, four years, you know, we came out with different ideas, different concepts. Um, you know, really, unfortunately, we had a, a detention pond in Simpsonville, which is about 15 minutes from us, that we put one of our skimmers in early on uh, for permanent use. Um, that, that's kind of a story in itself. We had to go to the county and beg them to let us let us use it because they were like, no, skimmers are only temporary. You know, you can't do that. And so, you know, we had to, had to do this as a, as a yeah, I mean, it, and the, and the county. What did you, I mean, how does that, how does that work? Like, what did you, do? I, we promise we'll go check on it. Like, what, well, like, do you not, you know. We, we, we had to, so, <laughs> so I'll give you that. It's kind of an interesting story. So um, it was a pond that was never maintained, back to maintenance. Never, never, never. Oh, maintained. There we go. Okay. And the uh, county just started enforcement. They hired a couple of inspectors like, hey, we're going to start inspecting detention ponds. Came across this one. Um, this is just coming out of the recession. So for folks, you know, uh, had to go through that. Um, during that time, I actually started a pond maintenance company. You know, we're, we're, okay. as I say, I was looking for revenue trickles. I, I had no, no idea of trying to get a stream, a revenue stream, but I was looking for revenue trickles. And that was one idea I had to do that. So, so we ended up doing maintenance on the pond. And uh a guy that um, I know bought the property. It was a, actually a recession victim property. Um, right. And um, my wife just come in the door, so my dog's gonna stop barking in one second. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but but they. Um, oh, it's gonna be alright. Okay. <laughs> they. Um, it was recession victim, right? And so we had done the the maintenance on the pond and finished the work, and the pond it had uh, the outlet structure. You could see holes in the outlet structure, but they were like three feet above the bottom of the pond. And we're like, what's going on? Is this thing supposed to be wet? Is it, you know, what's happening? So we did a bunch of digging mm. and found out that the pond was actually um, supposed, actually had a two inch outlet, but it was six feet below the current bottom of the pond. So muck had built up six over 15 to 20 years, built wow. up in this pond. Six feet? Six feet. And so this pond was about three quarters of an acre. It had side Holy. slopes of like like one and a half to one. So it was like phew, almost sheer getting. There's no way to drive a traco down the slope, right? So we were going to have to build a road in that you could get the muck out and truck. I mean, it was going to be I don't know seventy five to hundred grand back then is what my budgets were to 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 fix this pond. And so. Oh, yeah. Um, like I said, just so having me a client of mine that was buying the property. Um, and I told him, I said, listen, go work your deal out. I said, go, go negotiate. Here's my, here's my quote to fix this pond. If we have to do it, put it back to original condition. Um, but once you get your deal worked out, let me see what I can do. And so um, once he did, I went to the county, we redesigned the pond and we put in a skimmer as, as far as the outlet structure. And we were, it had enough volume in the pond that we just readjusted the outlet. And um, they told us no mm -hmm. two or three times. And I was doing some research and I found in the manual, they had this pilot program. Okay. I never, never heard of it. Cause I don't think we'd ever been used, <laughs> but so I went back to the county and said, Hey, 
how about we do this as a pilot program? And they go, all right, you know, we'll, we'll let you try it. Oh my gosh. What's the difference? Like, like it just, uh, it's like, so what are we in some sort of, that's like, like, Oh, Oh, you said the magic word pilot. Yeah, program. Yeah. So now, so, now we're going to let you do it. So for the first year <laughs> I had to give them monthly reports. I had to do monthly inspections, take photographs, document the thing out there monthly. And then the next right. two years we had to do quarterly. So for the first three years we had to show that it, it was doing what we said it was going to do. And so, uh, uh, yeah. So, I mean, they were there and, and I don't blame them. I mean, there's, I'll be honest. I probably come up with some ideas that it was probably good. They didn't let me do okay? <laughs> so, not everyone is, is right. Okay. So, so it's, it's okay to have a little bit of uh, caution about what you put I, in here. Okay? Yeah. That, so, I mean, yeah, but, but you were kind of putting it all on you, right? It's not like you were what? trying to sell them something and they were saying, no, you're like, Hey, I'm trying to see if this thing's going to work. Type yeah. Of deal. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, so, no. And then you give them the magic word. And then, yep. and then it's yes. Like, okay, cool, yep. cool, cool. Yep. Well, that- we actually did the same thing in Charlotte. We had a, a, a client had a, a similar site in Charlotte that had a big maintenance problem. They couldn't ever keep it clean. We actually cleaned it out, put it back to original condition for them, and it kept clogging up. It was really a natural area. Had a, you know, it was a you couldn't even build a pond today because the dam goes through a live stream and just like half the quote, pond is a natural wetland area that trees are still in it oh. and all the stuff, right? Okay. <laughs> and so all right. every yep. rain, they just get huge amount of leaf litter and limbs and sticks and stuff that goes down and kept, it was a 10 inch outlet, kept getting clogged up. And so uh, Charlotte had in their design manual, cannot use skimmers permanently. And so we had to take our product to them and it's HTPE. It'll last 20 plus years. It's durable. You know, go through the whole dog and pony with them. And they said, okay, you know, they didn't make us do quite the same pilot deal, but, uh, but they did allow it uh, to go in and that's still in uh, today as well. So it's, it's, you know, it's so much trash in there. You know, they still have to do some maintenance, but you know, the difference in pulling a rope and cleaning off a skimmer versus getting scuba gear to go down and clean out an outlet, you know, oh, yeah. you know, you're all waiting oh, yeah. you know, two or three weeks for it to clean out and go down. So it's, it's much more, uh, uh, you know, beneficial for the client and the County, you know, to, to have that other city. Right. Yeah. And it's, it works better. So, so all that being said, you know, um, kind of going back to the original thought when you, when you have those small rains and the, the no ponding and the water, you don't get water quality, but that's kind of the best you got right now. Everybody, you know, I think the regulatory community says, well, that's at least it's something, you know, there's something that's, and that's better than what we were doing. So we're going to, that's the best we can come up with. That's not so extreme cost that, you know, it's going to start killing projects. Um, and, you know, there's, it's not that hard to, to maintain that. You can go down there with a shovel and clean out the outlet structure, you know, clean it out. And so, so what we've done is is come out and we've been prototyping the like I said the filter to go around the skimmer, and the idea mm-hmm. is really a it's a trifecta for me. It's a win win win. So uh, number one, mm-hmm. uh, we got our testing back in November, um, and and your audience may or may not know this, but there's some new ASTM standards out for for sediment retention devices, and so. You know, if you're, you mentioned stormwater nerds at the beginning. So if, if everybody's really into it. <laughs> Everybody should be a stormwater nerd. Yeah, I don't right. know why you'd be listening to this podcast if you're not a stormwater <laughs> nerd. No, but I mean, hey, if you right. are, thank you. We thank you. I thank you. But yes, uh, yeah. chances so, are you're, you, yeah. you're a stormwater nerd. Yeah. So, but, <laughs> but there's no national standard, right? I mean, the rainfall is so different okay. across the country. Soil types are so different. Sure, yeah. You know, the issues yeah. I have in South Carolina are not the same as, you know, Tennessee or Ohio Heck. or Heck. Minnesota or wherever. Right. And so, right. right. So um, there haven't been, you know, there's been I, probably for as long as I've been with Rymar, there's been talk about national standards. Let's come out with national standards and a lot of, effort, you know, some effort, I won't say a lot, but ASTM's now gotten in the game and they've actually established a couple. And so, okay. you know, our testing was done to an ASTM standard. And, you know, it's so new that, you know, some MS4s don't even recognize the ASTM standards yet because they've only been out for mm-hmm. maybe a year or so. Um, but anyway, we had the testing done of that and we got over 90 percent TSS removal um, with our with our oh, okay. combination of the skimmer and the filter. Um, and we tested that in a way, you know, I wanted to be as conservative as I could to make sure whatever we're telling people we're meeting, we're really meeting. And so. 
we simulated a pond, but we put the sediment laden water in within a foot and a half or two feet of our filter. So we, we didn't have a four okay. bay. There's no travel time for stuff to settle. You know, it's dumping in and going straight to our filter. Right at it. Right <laughs> yeah. at it. I got you. And so, you know, it's like there's, we're not, we don't have to figure out what percentage did we get from the four bay? What's the factor for the travel distance? You know, when you do the design metho methodology for your pond, we took all that out. We said, hey, if we can hit 80% or 85% this way, then, you know, we're golden. You know, we're going to get better um, when you put it in a real pond. Mm -hmm and go there. So, well, let me stop you real quick right there. Let me stop you real quick because I want to make sure I understand. I think I understand what you're talking about, but there may be people that don't like, don't know how the testing testing works. Right. right? Cause a lot right. of us in the industry, we're not on your side on the manufacturing side. So we're just trying to scope stuff and put stuff in. So if I'm understanding like there's a four bay process, my assumption is you put, put in the dirty water and then it goes through four bays and your products over here on the fourth one. And so you're getting some of this you're getting some dropout across the bays and therefore you, it's kind of skewing the numbers, but it's quote unquote simulating what a pond effect would look like. Whereas you, what you're saying is you're like, no, 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 we just dumped the dirtiest water right in on our yep. product. And we were able to get this great, uh, you know, uh, removal percentage, 90%. And so we know it's going to be, you know, off the charts when it actually has to go through that sedimentation process right. in a real pond. Am I, yeah. am I recapping that correctly or can you Almost. clean that up for anybody? Yeah. The, the four is F O R E. So there's just one. Oh, four, shit. Four I'm just thinking, I'm thinking like, four four bay. I'm thinking like four bay. See, there you go. Yeah. Shows you how stupid I am. So, That's but, that, but yeah. So, so, so you typically yeah. like when your water comes into a pond, it's got a little, like a, a, pre-treatment basin, you know, a little rock dam or something that's smaller. Sure, right, right. That's designed to capture the big stuff, you know, that the, the big particles that settle out really fast, put there, and right. then overflows that, travel some distance to get to your outlet structure, and right, and you, and, and right. with the current pond design, you want as long a travel distance as you can get, so you got more time to settle, right? You want to, to settle and land in the pond before it gets all the way down to your outlet, because again, our standard right. is we're pulling off the bottom, so it's just going to get to the outlet. It gets sucked <laughs> out. So, right. um, so our test put the water, you know, our filters here, put the water right in, but you know, foot and a half, two feet from it, and then went through the filter, and our skimmers pulling the water through the filter to a discharge, and so it goes. And our our filter, um, it, we came up with a kind of unique design. We have a, a two stage system. So we have an outer stage. That's just like a woven polypropylene is a screen. You know, we're trying to screen out the bigger particles, take out the trash. It's a fairly heavy duty. You know, it can handle some debris and stuff up against it, monofilament or polyethylene filament. Um, and then our inner is a, a woven material. I mean, excuse me, a non-woven material, kind of like the felt recycle fiber kind of stuff. Um, okay. And we do it in a in actually two layers when we initially did it, we weren't getting enough flow through that material. And so we ended up doing like six inch slits or pieces and we overlap them. So the water kind of weaves through that and we get some contact time on the, on the yeah. material. And so that helps right. grab those sediment particles. And, you know, the material we use has some tests for metals. Um, it definitely has hydrocarbon. So it's going to take out majority of hydrocarbons as well. So if you've got any issues on those pollutants, um, we're thinking about phosphorus and nitrogen and other, you know, kind of dissolved pieces. We're not there yet. Um, you know, we're, we've been focused on sediment as, you know, that's the mass we can, we can actually, this stuff's not cheap. So we got to generate some sales to pay for the next round of research. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, got to sell some of this stuff. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't have a rich uncle that right. just said, Hey Jamie, here's a couple of million. Oh man. Oh. Yeah, so, uh, at least he hadn't said it to me. So yeah, so oh but, my gosh, that's hilarious. But, yeah, but, so so, but so let's circle back. So it sounds like I mean, and it sounds like you you because uh, you teased everybody a little bit, and it feels like, and I feel like you hit on it uh, throughout. But you said you had an easy fix for maintenance. Oh, I do. I so do. like, so like, so we gotta and, we gotta let that so, cat out of the bag for everybody. Go yeah, ahead. This, let's this, let's kind of wrap up with the easy fix for maintenance because. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah, there's going to be some people out there that have been listening. They're like, well, when's he going to get back to When are you yeah. going to get back to that maintenance thing? 
So it's, what'd you say? It was self. It's, it's it self- was self serving. Oh well, hey, let's hey, let's go. We are. We already just said that we need. Hey, rymarwaterworks.com. dot com. I do believe that's the this website. Is, Jamie needs. Is, Jamie needs to do more research. Yeah. So this this is not just self serving to me, but it's self serving to all of your stormwater nerds who are practicing engineers. Okay. There, so, all right. Well, here we go. Everybody that's listening, that's a consultant, now offers a service. So you know what what I hear from maintenance is. They don't have staff to do inspections. We don't have staff to enforce it. We don't have this. We don't have this. For like a cities, counties just don't. They, I, they, we got hundreds or thousands of ponds. We just can't get around to them. All right. Easy fix. Require an annual inspection from a qualified professional that just says the pond's doing what it's doing. All right. It's going to cost you, I don't know, 200, oh, yeah. 300, 500 bucks, something like that. And, and hey, as a, I own my own engineering company for almost 20 years. If I had, if I was getting 400 bucks per site that I had done over 20 years, I never would have sold it or I would have sold it for a, heck of a lot more money. Put it, that way. it would have been a lot worth a yeah. lot more money than it was. Well, you know, yeah. so what yeah. you're saying is the entities need to do that. The entities need yeah. to require that. So, I well, mean, it's sure, funny because that's how, that's, uh, that's how Houston, that's how Houston yeah. Yeah, Houston something does Charlotte it. does it. Uh, South Carolina, I don't know of anyone in, in South Carolina that do. I've suggested it to a few times, and they're like, we don't want to put that. Of course awesome. you have. You need to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a pilot program and see how it works. So, yeah. yeah let's do a pilot yeah. program. I'll do, our, my company, we'll bite the bullet. We'll do the inspections. Just send <laughs> them up right. our way. We'll, we'll, exactly. we'll do it. I've got exactly. research to do. <laughs> exactly. Yep. But that, that's, yeah, that's the easy fix. Very just cool. just hey, let, let the consultant community do do the inspections and send them in. And, you know, if you don't get a, an inspection in, you email them, say, hey, you're due. And if they don't send it, then you send your staff out there. So you cut your your inspections down probably to 10% of what it was. So, but anyway. Yeah, and then you can fine them on top of that, increase your exactly. tax revenue dollars. Exactly. Oh, my yeah. gosh. This, this, this conversation <laughs> went south quick. <laughs> I, I never, said, I, I never said anything about. Oh, I, did, I, I, I know. I know. I, I live on that compliance side. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. hey, look. Uh, what what else you got on your mind? We, we can we can kind of we can kind of wrap up there. Or if you got some other other things going on, are you going to be? Uh, are you guys are you guys going to StormCon? You guys going to be in StormCon? We are. We have not actually officially signed up, but um, actually, I just had a uh, um, a distributor reach out to me in da- in the Dallas area. That uh, is a good contact. So I'm like, hey, all right. Now that I got a, re- a really good meeting to go, um, you know, it, it's interesting. Skimmers um, in, are just now coming around in Texas. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. for, for our stormwater nerds in Texas, you, you know, this will be interesting. Um, they they adopted <laughs> Texas adopted requirements for surface surface withdrawal three months after South Carolina did in 2013. And uh, up until very recently, there's been very limited uh, enforcement of surface withdrawal in Texas. Now, I don't, you know, that's different between South Carolina. Hey, and man, I'm in, I'm in Texas. You yeah. can, and I don't, then that doesn't shock me not one yeah. bit. You know, yeah. I got friends at the DCQ and friends at the EPA office in Dallas, and they well, know. I mean, I'm not well, gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. It's yeah. It's the Wild West out here sometimes, I feel like. It, it so. is. Uh, I, you know, they had StormCon and IECA in Texas. I think one was in uh, San Antonio. One was in Austin a couple of years back, maybe four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. And and I was mm-hmm. excited. I was like, hey, get to go to Texas and open up a new market. Oh, yeah. and, do this. And, and, and we went out there. <laughs> I, I called the uh, I called Houston. I was like, hey, you know, Houston's got a lot of water. You know, they, they, they must do something. And I talked to somebody about the stormwater review there. She go, I said, do y'all review plans? She said, God, no, there's thousands of those things. We don't have time for that. <laughs> so I was like, oh, now I know why there's no enforcement. That was a long time ago. Yeah. So, so now yeah. they, hopefully it's changed yeah. some and then we're starting to see some. Oh, yeah. It, it, it got a little better than that. I'm not yeah. going to, I'm not going to confirm or deny how much, but I, yeah. it's definitely got, I mean, Houston has, I, you know, there's, yeah. there's, there's other parts of Texas I that Austin I think is, there's a big is, question is mark. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, but man, I'm, I'm excited for, uh, I'm excited for StormCon. We'll be there. So I'm glad, glad yep. you guys will be there. And then, um, so Jamie, what's the, uh, What's the best way to get in touch with you? Is it by your email, yes. phone? Do Emails people probably just go to the website. Way. Yep, yep. You okay. can. So our, our we'll website. put your email. What? Yeah. Yep. 
Go ahead. Yeah, RymarWaterworks.com. Yeah, Rymar R-Y-M-A-R, for those uh, you know, listening, R-Y-M-A-R, Waterworks.com. And then my email is just oh. Jamie. Uh, it's a J-A-M-I-E at RymarWaterworks.com. So, and I, you know, and I will say I, I love interacting with the engineering community and even the, the regulatory community. Um, you know, we, we were in Indiana recently and it's funny, I got a, an, in, I heard about a conference on a Wednesday and the conference was Monday. I talked to the person putting on the conference that Friday. She's like, yeah, we were going to talk about skimmers. We couldn't find anybody in this area who knew anything about them. I'm like, Hey, I'll be there. So, you know, oh, jump, wow. Well, you know, in act, Indiana. Act, yeah. Yeah, so Indiana's what was coming it, around. What was the name of the conference? Which which, which um, conference was it? It was in know? Evansville. It was a um, and it was something okay. that Evansville was doing. Um, it was like just right around okay. the Evansville area, um, and the <laughs> MS board coordinator uh, for Evansville, and um, she was nice enough to let me have about about fifteen minutes during lunch because she'd already filled up the agenda. But she said, "Hey, if you can tell us a little bit about skimmers, because we're you know it's a new requirement. We're just learning." I'm like, happy to do that. Nice. Says, hey, here's the here's oh, the man, basics. What a great opportunity. So, no, yeah. that's cool. That's cool. I mean, I grew up in Southern Indiana. I grew up probably 20 minutes from Evansville. So okay. that's, just, okay. that's why I was asking. I, I, so, I drove. I got cool. to visit uh, a lot of Indiana and a lot of Tennessee and parts of Kentucky. And you know, I kind of went a couple of different ways getting there and back. So, yeah. No. All right. What part of South Carolina are y'all out of? Where are uh, you we're at? We're in Green, Greenville. Oh, are you really? We got friends yeah. that live in Greenville. That's I, cool. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Green, Greenville's a great town. Just don't tell anybody else. We got. got hey, that's years. what they say. That's yeah, funny because right. you guys are growing. You got you guys oh, got a lot man. of people coming in, don't you? It's, it's, yeah, that's what our friends that. say. Like, yep. don't tell anybody. We like it here. Don't tell anybody else. Yeah, let's keep it quiet. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I mean, that's how. Yeah, that's how we. I mean, Texas, same thing. We got a lot of people oh, it coming is. in yeah. here too. No doubt. Well, I. I uh, I want to I just want to thank you for your time, sir. Your uh, uh, plethora of knowledge is always uh, it's always good getting a visit with you. And um, we'll put all those links, like I said, in the show notes so people can find you. Um, if you've got any other you know closing thoughts that you just like to share in general with our uh, stormwater nerds, as we keep calling our stormwater community here on the pod, right? Uh, I give you I give you the final I give you the final say. Any anything else you want to want to say know, before I, we sign off? The, the the biggest challenge we have right now is kind of goes back to the regulatory. You know, just just getting, right. getting things out there. So my, my last uh, last th final thought is if you do have any consultants that would like to give our new stuff a try, reach out to me. We, we will we'll help you plow the new ground. But that's kind of what it takes in the stormwater industry is for an engineer to specify. Say, hey, I'm going to spec this and I want to use this on my project. And, uh, you know, that's how new new project products get into the market is because somebody takes a little chance and says, OK, you know what? I like the idea. I think it would be a good thing for my project. Who cares if it benefits Jamie or Rymar or not? I think it's good for my project. Um, and then they'll they'll take a little bit of a of a leap with us because, you know, most reviewers you're gonna like we don't approve stuff. You know, we don't approve stuff. You know, we, we it's not up to us to approve your product. And and so that's our biggest challenge is just that first step. You know, to get right. one approved. Right. And, and then once that you know one person in that state's approved it. Then we say, hey, well, they approved it over here. Oh, if they did, we're good. And they're the dominoes roll, and then everybody can kind of, you know, technology can evolve, and we can all kind of learn and grow. And, you know, ultimately we want to do what's best for the environment. That's why we're here. And so we, uh, you know, where it fits, it'd be awesome to be able yeah, to. Yeah, and, and I'd even say, you know, too, like even if, and, and, and just kind of going over your stories and the whole thought process, like if you're, at an, and if you're in a bind, like if you're looking at a project and you're like in a retrofit situation or an inherited situation, Yep. On situation and 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 you're looking at an astronomical cost factor in order to to rectify that situation you got to get outside the box and i think you know what you're providing in a pros construction environment for you know the uh the surface withdrawal boom there you go right there i, you, I don't know what the dollars are that you save by not having to take 20 years worth of sediment out of a pond to get back to the i mean to me, that's a no brainer. It's just like, you can't, you can't do that. You gotta eat, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta think of it a better way, right? It's just yeah. not, it's not gonna be cost effective. So if you're in some sort of situation where you've got a project or I don't know how it fits on, I don't know how what you do, Jamie, works on footprint and sizing of ponds. Does it have an effect on, on that as well? Cause I, cause I could see somebody not being, you know, like you want to talk about that real quick. I know we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're wrapping up, but that's, a, it's interesting to me, like how new technology can affect the way we used to think like, Oh, well, 
if X is here, and then the Y is going to be this, yep. which equals this size pond. And oh my gosh, we can't fit that. What do we do now? Yeah, well, that's exactly. And everybody just sits around, looks at each other. I started yeah. on win, win, win scenario. So you know, one was hey. Oh we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're 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 meeting the the TSS removal, so we're actually treating right for the water. So from a regulatory standpoint, and really from a consultant standpoint of why we're out there, why we exist, and you know, we're really there to try to protect the environment. So that's you know, check one. Um, check two is your pond gets smaller. So instead of having to um, hold that large volume, you can filter it at whatever the rate your filter can handle. You know, whether it's our filter or some other options, you know, you can actually increase your outflow and, and it varies by area. But say like in South Carolina, the two year storm is our lowest storm event that we have to control quantity on. So if I can put in a okay. skimmer filter combination that can treat or handle my two two year storm rate. Okay, and we have our skimmers can flow up to about just under two CFS. So that handles a pretty decent size site. Um, then you can flow at that rate and your pond volume goes down um, over 20%. Just on your water quality volume goes down over 30% and your overall pond volume can go down somewhere between 15 and 20%. So if any consultant has a client that says, oh, I want a bigger pond, you know, you let me know. I hadn't found one yet. So <laughs> no, yeah. no, I mean that's the whole thing, right? Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so you actually, yeah, you hey, wait, pick, up, pick up a lot or pick up a couple thousand square feet or whatever. So, yeah. So what was three? Wait, so one is testing, so two is a smaller footprint, and three so was what? Three is for the engineers, because since once we have an approval and, and we show our testing meets that ninety percent, well, check the box. We're you know really simple check off that hey, I've met my permit requirement. Gotcha. Um, win, no win, win, win. You know, we, okay. We've met it. Here it is. You know, got the third party to back it up. And so simplifies the permitting process, at least that piece of it. You know, it, there's lots more to it than that, but at least simplifies that. Regulatory side, you know, you're treating more of the stormwater and developer side, you got a smaller pond. So uh, that, that to pond. me is three pretty good wins. Win, win, win. Gotcha. I'm glad we, uh, I'm glad we stayed on and circled back around to that. Yeah. And thank you again so much for coming on the pod. And uh, I will see you, sir. I will see you in Dallas. See you in Dallas. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, sir. Bye.